Hey everyone, it is Jess from the Kidney RD. I'm really happy to come in here today. Today is day three of Potassium Week where we're going to talk about potassium. Today we want to cover things you can do to take action today about potassium and what that means for you if you have early stage kidney disease. If you don't know me, I'm Jessie Edda Seville. I am the owner and the founder of the Kidney RD, which is a private practice of dietitians that focus only on preserving kidney function. That is our goal. And our mission is to help people find, uh, to find some help there. So things you can do about potassium today. Number one is that you want to be able to know your last couple labs. You need to know what your trends are with potassium. So if you haven't checked your potassium recently, um, that would be a good number to know. If you're not sure what it is, know what it is. If you are less than five, <clears throat> not everyone, and again, this is really individualized, most people that are less than five don't need a potassium restriction. Again, you don't have to restrict potassium just you, just because you have kidney disease. It's very individualized and very dependent on the person. So number one is know your lab so you can know if you really need a potassium restriction or not, because you might not. Um, and if you don't, then good. There's so many great foods that you can include that you, that, uh, have potassium in it, and potassium is great for helping your blood sugar or your blood pressure. Sorry, your blood pressure. <laughs> um, if you do need to restrict your potassium, then what you want to focus on are those low potassium foods, and then once a day you can have something from the high potassium group. Um, if you go to my website on the very front page, kidneyrd.com, there's a big blue bar that says first step is to get more plants in your diet, and you can enter your email there, and we will send you a high and low potassium lift. It's colorful, it's beautiful. You put it on your fridge to always have a reminder. So that's something that you can do. Um, so number one, know your labs so you know if you need a restriction or not. If you're not sure from looking at your labs, then you can ask your doctor or you can ask a dietitian, do I need to be restricting potassium? It's really important to get some clarity around that. So number one. Number two, if you don't need a potassium restriction and you've been restricting potassium, then go ahead and liberalize your diet. If you're feeling super nervous about that, then what we have people do, and again, it, you can feel nervous if you've heard forever and ever and ever, like don't eat potassium, don't eat this, don't eat that. Um, what you would do is knowing when your next lab draw is about the week before, maybe liberalize, put some potatoes in, a banana, some tomatoes, Liberalize your diet, kind of relax it a little bit with regards to potassium and see where that number comes out at. That doesn't mean to binge on any of those high potassium foods, but you can you can kind of test it and see if you really need that potassium restriction or not. So that's number two, liberalize your diet. If you don't need a potassium restriction, then liberalize it. That's something every single person can do. Um, <clears throat> so number one, Know your labs. Number two, liberalize if you can. The number thing, the number three thing that you can do to take action today about your potassium is figure out why it's high. So that means for some people, they need to track. We use chronometer, uh, C R O N O M E T R, chronometer.com. You can get a free account there, put your food in, you can track your nutrients there. If you have a potassium restriction, you're probably aiming for somewhere around 3,000 milligrams or so. If you don't, then more is better. <laughs> but otherwise, you can aim for around 3,000 milligrams for your potassium. The other thing that's nice about that is as you're entering your food in for the day, you can click on potassium and you can see where you're getting potassium from. But start tracking your food. Um, that's a great way to identify if food is actually the culprit. If not, then you want to ask your doctor or ask your dietitian, is there anything else that might be bumping up my potassium. So potassium, uh, there's many non-dietary non causes of high potassium and understanding that can be really important. So for example, people that have gut issues and are very constipated, they can tend to have very high potassium because they hyperabsorb the potassium in their gut. Um, so the, the goal <laughs> in that case is not eat a lot of low potassium foods. It is get the gut moving. Um, some people's their blood pressure medications are bumping up their potassium. There's not a lot you can do about that unless your doctor thinks there might be a substitute. But 
Uh, things like Losartan are used pretty frequently and they're important medications, so you're not necessarily going to take those off, um, but know what it, know what's bumping up. The other thing that can bump it up for some people is a really over-restriction, a very heavy restriction on sodium. Um, if people are eating 500 or sometimes less than 1,000 milligrams of sodium, they can tend to see their potassium up a little bit higher. So if you're over-restricting your salt intake because you're worried about it, um, it might be time to use just a little bit in your cooking and it will make your food taste a little bit better. So again, understanding why your potassium is high, if this is a problem for you, is a huge part of it. Okay, so three things, a recap, three things you can do to take action today to help out with your potassium levels. Number one, know your let you know your levels know what they're at and know if you actually need a potassium restriction or not because you may not number two is if you don't need a potassium restriction then liberalize your diet if you do need a potassium restriction then get yourself one list don't use a bajillion list just use one list and stick with it <laughs> use one list you can take the one from my website it's free just drop in your email and it will go to your inbox Get one list and work off of that list and focus on those low potassium foods with one high potassium food for day, per day. Number three, the third thing you can do is if you're worried about your, your levels and you need to get them down is track your food. We use chronometer. Have a dietitian review it with you and see where you might be getting too much potassium and or explore non-dietary causes of high potassium because potassium is not all about food. Um, anyways, three things for you today. I hope that is helpful. If you're struggling with potassium or need some help kind of figuring that out, you can go to our website at kidneyrd.com. You can click on work with us and there's a book, your free nutrition strategy call. Actually, the front, front page, there's a button there. Book your free nutrition strategy call, 30 minutes where you talk with me and we kind of talk through the uh, what are some of the things that can help you preserve your kidney function. And um, I like to answer some practical questions as well during that call. Anyways, that's all for now. I hope that's helpful. And um, tomorrow will be our last day on potassium. So make sure and watch the video on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram um, or you'll see me pop in here tomorrow to talk a little bit more. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.